when there's nothing to fix, nothing to change, and you see the hidden order in there, your physiology doesn't have to create symptoms and you have wellness. I have been involved in the healing arts and fascinated by healing for 50 years. I had a health problem as I was a teenager and that catapulted a thirst for understanding about what exactly does the healing process involved and what exactly is the keys to the healing process. So I want to share with you what I learned along that journey. A number of years back, 20 something years now, around 25 years ago, I wrote a book called The Healing Power of Gratitude and Love. Count your blessings, The Healing Power of Gratitude and Love. So I've been involved in that topic for many years. I really believe that that is one of the greatest healing powers we have within us. We have an intrinsic capacity to heal. We often sometimes think that, well, the doctor does the healing, the pill does the healing, but that's not exactly the fact. That may be of assistance, but that's not really what does the healing. Most of us have spontaneous healings within from various conditions. And I'd like to talk about what it is that maximizes that. So again, get ready to take some notes. When we meet somebody and we judge them and we put a condition on them and we elevate them, we tend to minimize ourselves in response. So anytime you exaggerate somebody else, you'll minimize you. Or we might judge in the opposite direction. We might minimize them and exaggerate us. When we do, we put conditions, valencies, emotional charges on them and us. We cannot judge another individual and put him on a pedestal or pit without putting ourselves in a pit or pedestal to compensate. So all the judgments are relative and they're conditioned primarily by a value system that we have that's unique or possibly those that have been injected by some social idealism that we have maybe subordinated to. But whatever it is, if we put people on pedestals and minimize ourselves, we're too humble to admit what we see in them inside us. If we put them in pits and exaggerate ourselves, we're too proud to admit what we see inside them inside us. So whenever we're too proud or too humble to admit what we see in others inside us, we have disowned parts dismembered parts and we have deflective awareness we deflect and don't own what we see in other people those deflected parts leave us feeling empty you cannot judge another individual without feeling empty and anytime you put somebody in a pedestal or pit and put yourself in a pit or pedestal you're inauthentic because if you puff yourself up relative to somebody you look down on, you're exaggerating yourself and that's not who you are. <clears throat> and if you put people on pedestals and minimize yourself into a pit, that's not who you are. One is proud, one is shamed, one is exaggerated, one is minimized. That's not you. We all want to be loved for who we are, but if we're not being who we are, we won't feel love for it. And we'll have an emptiness. The emptiness will be the disowned parts that we have that we're deflecting, that we're not owning. I've said in many of my seminars, the breakthrough experience particularly, that at the level of the soul, the state of unconditional love, nothing's missing in us. But at the level of the senses where we judge, we perceive things missing in us. And the things we think are missing in us are all the things we're too proud or too humble to admit we have that we see in other people. And those deflected disowned parts that leave us empty also affect our physiology. So when we put people on a pedestal and infatuate with them, they represent in our brain, in our amygdala, prey. Our amygdala assigns valencies to experience and labels things either pleasurable or painful, positive or negative, something attractive or repulsive. And so we put it on a pedestal, 
It's like prey. We want to consume it. We want to be around it. We want to be around our people that we put on pedestals. <clears throat> and what that does in the brain is it assigns a valency of a positive, activates the parasympathetic nervous system inside the physiology of the autonomics, and causes a parasympathetic response, which is rest and digest, because we want to consume that individual and we feel more comfortable around that individual. We don't have to be defensive against them. We're engaged with them. When you're infatuate with somebody, you want to consume them. You call them sweetheart, honey bunny, cupcake, sweetie pie. You want to consume them, rest and digest. You probably want to sleep with them in some cases. But when somebody you look down on and you resent, you activate not the parasympathetic nervous system, but the sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight response. You want to avoid that individual. It represents a predator. It could eat you. You want to avoid it. So anytime you look up at something and activate the parasympathetic nervous system and minimize yourself, and anytime you look down on somebody and activate the sympathetic nervous system and exaggerate yourself in defense, you activate a autonomic dysregulation in physiology. And now you have too much or too little of one of those sides of the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is designed to maintain balance. In fact, heart rate variability, which is a measure of resilience and adaptability, comes from a perfectly balanced autonomic function with the sympathetic and parasympathetic are balanced. But anytime you have one over the other, you create symptomatology. Now, the symptomatology has been labeled illness, but the illness might be feedback responses from physiology to let us know that we have an imbalanced perspective. We're judging. We're not loving somebody. So the symptomatology that the body creates is a feedback to let us know we're not loving unconditionally and are not grateful for the order, the balance that this individual or this individual we're judging is and represents. So anytime we put people in pedestals of pits and we activate the autonomic nervous system and cause an autonomic dysregulation syndrome, we create symptomatology in our physiology that lets us know that we have an imbalanced perspective on life. We're not unconditionally loving. We're not grateful for the order that's there. We're seeing a disorder and when we put people on pedestals, we want to change ourselves related to them, which is futile. If we try to inject their values and live in their values and try to be like them, envy is ignorance and imitation is suicide, as Emerson says. We can't do that. And so we end up breaking down. And if we are resentful to somebody, we want to change them relative to us. We try to get them to live in our value systems. Anytime we try to get others to live in our value system, or we try to get ourselves to live in somebody else's value system, we have futility. And we create symptomatology. And the symptomatology, which has futility, is trying to let us know that we're judging and not loving. And we're ungrateful, not grateful for the hidden order of the balance that's present that we're overseeing. In the Breakthrough Experience program, which I've taught for 1,163 times over the last 34 years, I've asked people sets of questions to make them fully conscious of what they're unconscious of. Because see, if you're infatuated with somebody, you've got them on a pedestal, you're unconscious of the downsides. And if you're resentful and put them in the pit, you're unconscious of the upsides. And as long as you're unconscious of one or the other side, you're not fully seeing what's there. You're not seeing the hidden order in there. You're seeing chaos, disorder. Disorder means missing information. So the second you ask the right questions and see both sides and see the fullness of what's there and don't put people on pedestals or pits, but see them for who they are, you level the playing field. You don't exaggerate, minimize yourself, which means you now have equanimity and authenticity and you don't exaggerate, minimize them. So therefore you have equity between you and them and you're not puffing them up or beating them up. You're not putting them on pedestals or pits. And there's nothing to change in you relative to them or them relative to you. When there's nothing to fix, nothing to change, and you see the hidden order in there, your physiology doesn't have to create symptoms and you have wellness. Wellness is a confirmation of you seeing what actually is 
An illness is a feedback to let you know you're not seeing the whole picture. That's why I say that gratitude and love is still the greatest healers. But we don't pay attention. We're, we're so used to a palliative health care system, which is based on an amygdala's response, avoid pain, seek pleasure, that the second we have a symptom, we assume that that's illness instead of a response of feedback to guide us to how to love. So we take a quick pill for every ill and we cover up with palliative care instead of actually curative understanding. And then we end up not getting the lesson that the body is giving us, the wisdom that it's trying to do. Claude Bernard and Walter Cannon, two both great physiologists, talked about the internal melio that brought homeostasis and the wisdom of the body. And we have not paid attention to it. We've not applied physiologist. So we just go and take what's been advertised on TV and take a pill for every ill and then get rid of the symptoms that are actually guiding us on how to live a more loving and more balanced and more authentic and more ordered life. If we pig out and we end up feeling like crap the next day, is that because we've got a deficiency of some dye gels or some sort of drug that's an antacid? No. We are basically unregulated in our behavior, creating symptoms to let us know that and taking a pill to cover that up and not get the lesson to me is not the wisest way approaching it. It's wiser to know what the physiology is representing and get a sense for what it's trying to tell you. The symptoms of your body are feedback mechanisms guiding you to the authentic you. The feedback from the body is so magnificent that really no healthcare system outside of gratitude and love is as powerful. But we don't pay attention to it. As Bronnie Ware in her Five Regrets of the Dying described, and I had the opportunity to chat with her, she's a lovely lady, she, uh, she nailed it. Many of the things that we're regretful for in life at the end of our life is only because we didn't live authentically. We subordinated to what we think it should be and the, the supposed to's and have to's and got to's and must instead of the love to's. And I think that the body is doing everything it can to teach us how to love and how to be authentic and how to be grateful for the hidden order that life offers. The hidden order is actually there. In the Breakthrough Experience program, which I've been teaching all these years, I have a special column in my Demartini Method, column 6 and 13 we call it. And I basically help you see the hidden order in the apparent chaos in your life. See, in every moment in your life that you see an imbalance, you end up storing that information in the subconscious mind that causes you impulsive and instinctual behaviors like an animal and causes you through associations to avoid and seek things and uh, or seek and avoid things. And therefore, you're an automaton reacting to misperceptions in the external world instead of actually being in governance of your life. But the moment you see both sides of an event and don't overreact, don't go into systems one thinking of the amygdala, which is a survival center where you just, you know, f avoid and seek like an animal, prey and predator response, but you actually have an executive function where you're governed and you see both sides and you have see objectively your wor world out there and you see the hidden order in life. And, you, know, you see, it's only hidden because you're not aware of it. It's not, the order is already there. There's an order in what's going on in your life, but you're not seeing it. In the breakthrough experience, I teach people how to discover that hidden order, how to have true gratitude, how to open the heart to an unconditional love moment, how to watch physiology resolve itself and heal itself. I mean, I've had thousands of people over the years give me a letter and say, whatever happened at the breakthrough experience, my this and this symptom disappeared because they went back and loved the things that they had been judging. The emptiness brought in fulfillment because they loved. When you love, you have fulfillment. When you judge, you have emptiness. You have disowned parts. When you love, there's no disowned parts. You're not too proud or too humble to admit what you see in others inside you. You own it all. There's nothing missing in you. You have fulfillment. There's nothing you're trying to futilely trying to fix in yourself relative to others or others relative to you. You're just graced instead of disgraced. You're appreciative. Your life appreciates in value. Your body rallies. You have used stress, not distress, which is wellness promoting. You have pro and anti-inflammatory cytokines 
in the immune system that respond to the autonomics. When they're in perfect balance, your body doesn't have extreme reactions and cytokine storms. But the second we get highly infatuated or highly resentful and put people in pedestals or pits and minimize ourselves and exaggerate ourselves and move into inauthenticity, our body is designed to create symptoms to let us know that we're being authentic. It's our body. The, the symptoms aren't illness and there's something that's bad. It's actually a part of the wellness process. A lot of the symptoms we think are illness are actually part of wellness. They're functional. And most people don't get that. They just think, oh, I got to take another pill for every ill. But the real, the reality is the symptoms of your body may be guiding you to an th authentic life. You may not have learned how to interpret them. Maybe you've never been taught. I, I sat down and wrote a big textbook on the psychology of all those illnesses to try to educate people on what those mean. Because most people don't get their understanding in physiology. But the wisdom of your body is profound and it knows how to do it. And, it, and I really believe that the brain, your brain is a love seeking organism or organ. It is, is dedicated for you to have an appreciative life, to appreciate and value and to love your life. When you're living by your highest priorities, the highest values in life, you increase objectivity, you have less judgment, you have more fulfillment, you're more grateful and you have love what you're doing. And so all of the symptoms are letting you know you're down in your amygdala doing lower party things. A lot of people who are unengaged and not inspired by what they do in life have more illness, more distress levels. The more you're in your amygdala, the more you seek that which is unobtainable and try to avoid that which is unavoidable. And the more you seek that which you're infatuated with, the more you fear its loss. And the more you try to avoid that which is unavoidable, the more you fear its gain. So you're living with an anxiety all the time instead of an inspiration. That's why I teach the breakthrough experience, to teach people how to identify what they value, to start prioritizing their life, to start delegating lower priority things, to get on with what's most meaningful. They have more objectivity, less judgment, more appreciation for life. The executive center is also called the appreciation center. You have more resilience, more adaptability. You have autonomic regulation. You have homeostasis. You have a profound capacity to do extraordinary things. But the second you're doing lower priority things and getting in your amygdala and start judging and getting subjectively biased instead of objectively truthful, your body will create symptoms to let you know you're not being authentic to try to get you back on track. And then to try to get a pill to get rid of the symptoms instead of learn from what they're trying to give you insights from is foolish in my opinion. That's the last resort, not the first approach. The wisest approach is to learn to love and appreciate. Do what you love and love what you do on a daily basis with the people you love and do that on a daily basis and you'll have less illness, less distresses. You have more vitality. Your vitality in life is directly proportional to the vividness of the vision and your vision becomes crystal clear when you're living by priority and you're congruent. So I tell people to prioritize their life. In the breakthrough experience, I have people go through there and identify their values. I first, I give an overview of how physiology and psychology works. It's a gold mine. So you have an understanding of what, why these things are occurring, what these symptoms mean. Then I help you identify what your values are. So you can start structuring your life according to priority. Because if you're not filling your day with high priority actions that inspire you, it's going to fill up with low priority distractions that don't. And the low priority distractions that don't are going to create symptoms in your body to let you know you're not being truthful to yourself. Your real identity is what revolves around the highest value. Your highest value is your ontological identity. And when you live by priority, you feel that that's who you are. My highest value is teaching. I do it every single day. My identity revolves around that. If you ask me, who am I? I'm going to say I'm a teacher. But if you're trying to do something low on your values and fit into society's expectation, it may not be authentic to you. You're going to pay a price. You're going to create symptoms. Most people are subordinating to that and fearing the rejection of society and not being authentic to themselves. They go around and say they want to make a difference, but how are you going to make a difference fitting in? You're going to make a difference by being authentic to what your values are. So in the breakthrough experience, I first help them identify what that is. I, I give them the theories and principles behind it, why their body does what it does. So they have a wake up call instead of just a pharmaceutical promotion on television version about what symptoms represent which to me are incomplete. 
And then I teach them the Demartini method in the break to expand. And that is how to dissolve all of the incomplete awarenesses, all the judgments that are weighing you down. You literally weigh yourself down gravitationally when you weigh your, build up all these valencies and judgments. Every judgment that hasn't been neutralized and brought back to love weighs you down and creates signs and symptoms in your physiology to let you know that you're not being authentic. You're authentic when you love and appreciate yourself and other people. And that's what I do in the breakthrough experience. I teach people how to do that. I teach them how to heal. I teach them how to be real. I teach them how to be authentic. I teach them how to be inspired by their life so they can prioritize and do something that they love doing so they can tap dance to work, as Buffett says, instead of sitting there doing something that's drudgery. Most people are in life are going through and having Monday morning blues, Wednesday hump days, thank God it's Fridays and week friggin' ends instead of in life of inspiration. And it's not necessary to be living that way. You can transform your life. In the breakthrough experience, every week I train people on how to do that. And I've seen thousands, and I mean tens of thousands, even over 100,000 people who've been able to do that. So I'm certain that you can do that. And I know that can help you in your health and well-being. I know it will help you in your fulfillment levels. I know it will help you in not weighing yourself down with judgments and not being reactive and start living proactive, living with foresight and living by design and not sitting there by duty. So if that's of interest to you, please take the time to come to the break to expand. The time spent, I guarantee you, is a gold mine. I ask people every weekend at the end of the breakthrough experience, how many of you learned something this weekend? You could have gone your entire life. And if you hadn't have been here, you, you would not have learned. Every hand goes up. Guarantee it will happen when you come. You're going to learn something that's original. I've been working 50 years on human behavior and on the healing arts. And I am certain that there's, there's more than what you've been taught out there. Paul Dirac, the Nobel Prize winner, said it really nicely. It's not that we don't know so much. We know so much that isn't so. We've been taught things misguided, misinformed about a lot of stuff. And that's not because of any other reason other than a commercial objective. That's really the bottom line. People sell the fantasies. It sells a lot easier than the truth. But if you want the truth, it sets you free and it helps you heal. And love is something that's true. Everybody wants to be loved for who they are. And in the Rake to Experience, I can show you how to do that. I can show you how to heal, show you how to master your life take command of your brain, start living by foresight, not hindsight. I know what it can do. I've seen it in thousands of people. I know what it could do for you. And I love watching the transformations in people's lives. It brings tears to my eyes on a weekly basis to see the changes in people's lives and the trajectory change they make and the healing that goes on. Not only healing in their body, but healing in relationships, healing in their business. When people are not doing what they love, they're not inspired by their work, it kills them. It, it weighs them down. And people will sometimes endure all the way till retirement age doing something they don't love to do for that extra little so-called pension. And they don't realize that that's holding them back sometimes from something a really inspired life. Come to the break to experience. Let me show you how to set yourself free from that path. You can live mediocrity or you can do something extraordinary. I'm interested in helping people do extraordinary things. I've been working on that for 50 years. I wrote a book many years ago on how to live an extraordinary life, how to live an amazing life in just 60 days with 60 action steps you can do that can change your life. In the breakthrough experience, I go through those action steps. Let me share those with you. Let you take those and run with it. Watch the trajectory change. Watch the healing that happens in your physiology and life. Watch the authenticity that develops. And we'll join together and do something extraordinary together. If I help other people get where they want to get in life, it helps me get what I want to get in life. I learned that many years ago from Zig Ziglar. And I still believe that's a solid truth that we can learn in. And we might as well do it and pass the torch. Once you learn it, you're going to go and pass the torch and help it with your loved ones too. So I'll see you at the break to experience. You spent 24 minutes today, but 24 hours is where we're going. And I guarantee you're going to learn something there you're not going to learn anywhere else. And uh, so I look forward to you know, coming to the Breakthrough Experience and sharing this insight with you and this information about how you can heal your life. I'm certain it can make a difference in life. So join me. I look forward to seeing you there and also next week at the next webinar that I do. And uh, thank you for joining me today and have an absolutely amazing week. But go, sign up today. I know you'll say thank you.